guys, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. Today I just got a new uh, acrylic arm um, assembly for the Kubota, um, our Kubota here. So I'm gonna be installing that today and just run you through how it all fits together and connects. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. But anyway, here we go. So step one is gonna be joining these two components together. Uh, you'll see here on the inside, this has a thread and we'll be threading that onto the hydraulic arm which is here so that part's pretty straightforward though the threads on this are a little bit it feels as though it's the wrong thread size when you start to adjust it because it's quite tight but i managed to just lock this section onto something and then twist the arm on so we'll do that i'm just going to use this lock that on there and twist this arm on no, I'm working. All right, so when this assembly come, we got a packet of these, of this, uh, these two hoses and a series of these adapters as well. And uh, so the plan is here just to show you how they all connect together and fit. Um, they, they all must come, I'm gonna have some leftover parts for sure. So it must cover all uh, varieties of Kubota, this particular adapter pack. Um, I'm having trouble screwing on this end nut, so I'm hoping that once I connect these hydraulic hoses, connect that up to the tractor and uh, prime this with the hydraulic fluid, that it'll offer some rigidity to this. Because every time I turn, turn this to adjust it, it's twisting on the inside of here. Um, so I'm unable to actually tighten it. So I'll just run you through the process really quickly on, on uh, how we fit these hose together. We start by just taking these off. I'm just repeating what I did on this side. So I won't cover both, I'll just cover the one and the same principle applies with both. So I've got this reducer nut here. Let's screw that onto there. Do that. Nice and tight. Because we're dealing with some pretty insane pressures when it comes to hydraulic line. So um, nice and tight is always the key. And then we'll go ahead and screw this guy on. Now it should, should glide on fairly easy. And if it doesn't and there's some resistance, there's a good chance that you're actually cross-threading it. So I can do it and, and see if you can adjust it to get it to go on reasonably smooth. Because you don't want to cross-thread these bolts. It's just an unnecessary hassle that can easily be avoided. So easily avoid it. And then at the top end here, because I'm just going to plug these straight into our hydraulic port. So at the top end we've got another reducer. This is a different size than the one that's down the bottom. Um, and we'll screw that into this end. Or another adapter. Change the, uh, the thread size. Two shifters under this guys. Put them up. Again, nice and tight and then we'll get the piece the hydraulic connector that's plugged straight into the hydraulic port at the back of the tractor nice and easy I suppose you could use some Loctite or something just don't get a grade that's going to um, permanently fuse it together you want one that you can undo if you want but Loctite is probably a better product to use than thread tape when dealing with the hydraulic line not that I'm a hydraulic specialist by any stretch, but it, um, that's certainly been the reference that I've got when it comes to hydraulic guys in the past that I've spoken to. Yeah, so what I'm hoping now is this offers some rigidity, and if this doesn't offer some rigidity and I can't uh, attach this end properly, then I'm not sure where we're going to go from there, but we'll figure it out anyways. We're going to go with the up and down scenario, so we need a, an input and a return so that we can reverse the, the plumbing. This will be... Oh, this will actually be the first time that I've used this particular hydraulic line. So um, we'll see how we go. And if I get the right 
Right connections, first off. So we go one at the top here. That's uh, one done. Uh, I should not be attempting this in the shirt that I've got on. Really dumb move. Uh, it's two done. Now yeah, let's jump in and have a play around with the, uh, the hydraulic lines inside and see if we've got the right combo. I almost I'll lose this t-shirt too. Uh, silly me. Got grease all over my bloody shirt. I'll take this off after I wash my hands and get stuck into it properly. There we go. Now I'm in that uh, uh, shirt. It's a little bit more fitting to the situation. Anyways, uh, as the old expression goes, we'll kick this tractor in the guts. And have a play around with these levers and see what happens. I'm guessing it's these guys just here. Okay, so don't go up and down as I first did. I had it connected to uh, here and here. That was a mistake. Pressure just built up and they were leaking like that. And it was a tremendous amount of pressure. Instead of going side by side, and now we'll give it a test. Now hopefully that's offered us that little bit of rigidity that we need to adjust this uh, this connection, this fitting right here, so we can screw that onto that thread properly. And the answer is no, it hasn't. It hasn't at all. I, every time I turn this, that thread's still moving with it, so I can't screw this on or off. Therefore, the conclusion is, it must be the wrong size nut. Oh, the pressure in these is crazy. Anyway, left and right, that's the two connections that we uh, have to use. Got it? Now I'm like the old calipers out, taking measurement of this, this fitting. Alrighty, so, got the calipers here. Let's have a measurement on the inside diameter of this guy. We've got 2.4. This guy. Yeah. 2.5. Definitely the wrong. It's definitely the wrong thread size. Okie doke. Give him a call. Tell him we need a new piece like this with the correct thread size on it. Okay, so a few days have gone past. It was the wrong piece. The um, the linkage pin set up was the uh, the wrong piece. So I contacted the dealership that I bought it from and uh, and I got the correct one. So we'll just fit that on really quickly and take it from there. So I damaged the threads a little bit on this and just had to file and sand them back so that this nut was able to move freely. Um, now I've managed to get that all the way down to the base, that's where I'll keep it. And I'm going to attach this piece on the end. So again, I have one of my kids with me at the moment. Say hello, Jonah. Hello. He's just giving me a hand threading this on. So now that's threaded all the way on. Um, and I'll hold it tight with the two spanners. Could you please pass me that? Spanner, please. Quick. Thank you. Shift direction, not a spanner. Okay, close enough. What do you normally use soap for, mate? What? What do you normally use soap for? Bath. Oh, bath and to wash your hands. That's why I've got soap. Yeah, I'm just gonna hold onto the nut and give this a twist. Yeah. And now it's on there, nice and strong. 
and we are ready to connect this to the tractor. Hey guys, I'm in the process of edit editing this video at the moment and I realised that the footage of the working uh, actuator or hydraulic arm is missing. So I have a picture here instead of a fully installed one. Where you get the picture, it just helps with the side tilt of any, any implement that you've got on the back. Um, the main reason we needed it was for a netting machine uh, to help the side tilt up and down and, and uh, from side to side. Um, so yeah, so here's the picture and mm, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this and uh, if you found it useful, please consider liking and subscribing. There will be more content like this to come, um, plenty of grapevine stuff and I will see you all on the next video.